It's hard to tell exactly how long deliberations could take. Some believe the prosecution has a clear case, but it's important to note the complex nature of the charges Kelly faces. Tanetta Thompson, a trial attorney for the city of San Francisco's Department of Police Accountability and former prosecutor, joins me for a look ahead. Tanetta, good to have you back. Let's just dive right in um, and start with the brief moment when R. Kelly spoke and addressed uh, the court. He said, no, ma'am when asked if he was certain he didn't want to testify. Now, as lawyers, we understand the risks associated with a defendant taking the stand, but if anybody watched R. Kelly's interview with Gail King, they'd understand why his decision not to testify was a good move. But besides his tendency to lose his cool, why would it be disastrous for him to take the stand? Well, it would be disastrous because the prosecution is going to nitpick every answer that he was to give. If he were to relate back to a time and place, they would go through that with strict scrutiny and pin him to the point where his words get fumbled up, where they catch him in a lie, and where they know that he's not telling the truth to the jury. So it was in his best interest not to testify. As we saw on Gail King, yes, he can be unhinged, but doing that in front of the jury, along with knowing that you're committing basically perjury by lying about all of the incidents of the violent sexual acts you've committed on these young minor women would be, again, disastrous and would only um, exacerbate and prove the prosecution's case even more. Well, speaking of the prosecution, of course, let's let's go there uh, since they have the burden of proving R. Kelly uh, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, do you think that they've actually met that burden? I do. They have meticulously and um, detailed each and every instance, not only through all comp victims, past and present, that we have known, including bringing up the late Aaliyah, the singer. Um, but they have laid out actually a criminal racketeering enterprise that included using his celebrity, using his fame, and using his wealth to further these sexual, violent, and predatory instances on these young minor women. So in fact, they have, even though it seemed like maybe at times like, well, how many more witnesses or how many more victims are we going to get? That actually aided the prosecution in laying down and prove beyond a, a reasonable doubt that every element of the crimes that R. Kelly was charged with were proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, in cases like these, you know, people wouldn't expect a, a charge for racketeering, right? Um, but the charge is built around 14 underlying crimes that prosecutors say Kelly committed as part of a criminal scheme that he's led for decades. The prosecution is taking their time as well in closing arguments. I mean, they spent three hours today uh, and they're gonna continue tomorrow going over the elements for seven of those 14 underlying acts and they haven't even gotten to the eight counts under the Mann Act, which bars sex trafficking across state lines. Um, is this sort of laborious presentation necessary? Yes, in order to get the full picture, that full scheme, and it's a really elaborate scheme, even though it may seem as though, you know, it just was so happening, these people were his like, um, his do men or his do women that actually did all of these things for him. What it showed was that he actually took the time to make sure that he had, quote unquote, maybe the legal ramification, maybe the legal steps in place in case these women were to come forward and accuse him because he knew what he was doing was wrong and against the law and basically um, tumultuous to these young women. Um, this uh, racketeering um, charge and what it seems like in sexual exploitation that he has all of these people in place to move these women to make sure that there's a backpack with iPads so that his uh, fetish for videotaping and for watching uh, what he does to these women can be on tape as well as these men and uh, women can be on tape and it has to be laid out so that they can see that it was just more than maybe how R. Kelly's team is presenting it as these fans who only want money now and are only coming out now to uh, get these sexual exploits, you know, or to, you know, make a mockery or whatever of R. Kelly. No, it's to show that this was part of his whole scheme and plan to fulfill his own devious sexual uh, fetishes through the use of young women and that he would do anything, including trafficking these women across state lines in order to satisfy some evil uh, 
evil um you know a uh, fetish that he has and that he the people that he employed were used to satisfy that uh, evil fetish as well so this is more than just um him engaging with his fans over the years this is something that where he sought out these young vulnerable uh victims and took advantage of that and used his money and resources to further uh this racketeering and exploiting these young women and men Elizabeth Geddes, she's the uh, prosecutor giving the closing, also used a large blackboard showing Kelly in the center surrounded by a network of associates that she says uh, served as enablers for his criminal conduct. Explain why providing visuals for the jury is important in general, but especially during closing arguments when that'll be the last time both sides will get to address the jury. And always when we're doing trials, right, remember as prosecutors, we want them to, we always get the last word, the prosecutors. But in this day and age, we are such visual individuals. And to see that picture and to see how it plays out and to see R. Kelly in the center with it almost like a mafia type board with the mob and all of these individuals helping and aiding him. It is a real, um, it is real telling and it gives the jury a picture of how intricate and how much of a syndicate it was and how he was controlling each and everything that happened when it came down to exploiting trafficking and sexually abusing these young men and women. So what you see is when you get this picture and when you see this blackboard, you see the lengths that R. Kelly went to just so that he could fulfill his devious sexual fantasies at the stake of these young women and men's lives and livelihoods. So it's a very telling. The jury goes back into the jury room. They're thinking about that. All they're left is the visual. They may have a packet of jury instructions. They'll have boxes of evidence that has been presented from both sides. But what is going to stick out, though, is probably this blackboard with R. Kelly in the middle and all of these individuals helping him uh, with these 11 or so uh, victims of his uh, sexual deviant crimes. Well, Tanetta, before I let you go, um, I want to get your prediction on how long uh, this jury will take to reach a verdict. Uh, the evidence seems so overwhelming, but the charges are complicated, and you know that a quick verdict is usually a bad sign for the defense. So what do you think? Um, I think it could take anywhere. I'm not going to guess, you know, juries are so, you can never, oh, you always want to say no matter how many jury trials you do, like you can kind of gauge the jury. But I think with this case, the jury wants to get it right, right? And the prosecution has laid down the evidence to, to, for them to say like, look, take your time. And they're going to tell the jury, I mean, the prosecutor is going to tell the jury that, take your time go through each of the evidence that we have presented, look at each of the elements, because it's up to jurors that each element is fulfilled in order to find a guilty verdict on that. And they're going to say, look how this, and that's what the prosecution is doing right now. She's going through each of the crimes, and they may seem elaborate, but what the prosecution is doing right now is really breaking it down to a science so that anyone can get it, because that's who our jurors are. They come from our community. They are us right and so what they want what she wants to show them and explain to them is like look this is what we have this is the evidence that we have presented and you're going to plug each piece of evidence and each piece of evidence shows that r kelly is guilty in each and every one of these counts and that's what they're going to do and it's going to take some time there's been so much evidence there's been many witnesses so there's going to be so much uh, that they can do Attorney Tanetta Thompson, thank you so very much for lending your expertise.